Welcome back to Guardians of the Galaxy Month. So you're all excited about that new movie and you want a better understanding about that comic book group. Well, it's time for me to explain the current Guardians of the Galaxy team, their first major story, and then the rotating teammates of Iron Man, Venom, Captain Marvel, and Angela. But first, it's Star-Lord, Gamora, Groot, Rocket Raccoon, and now Drax the Destroyer. Hold on a second. Uh, Rob, is that you? Yeah. I mean, who else is going to call you? Sal and Dave hate you. Well, that's that's true. What did you want, Rob? Well, you're forgetting all about the villains of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, you're, you know, you're forgetting Ron and the Accuser, and I'm making a request for Ron and the Accuser. I, who, who's Ron and the Accuser? Ron and the Accuser, man. He's the villain. He's been in all the previews. Do you not do your research for your videos? Uh, well, you know, I've been trying to avoid spoilers for the movie because I'm really excited about it. How am I going to cover such an obscure character? No one knows anything about Ronin. I have a channel called Marvel Explained, Benny. Do you want me to help you out? Please, Rob. Please. Gently. Hello everyone over at Benny's channel on Comic Story and <laughs> what's going on guys this is Rob and as you guys are aware myself and Benny are doing this sort of crossover where we're talking about Ron and the Accuser on both my channel and his channel. On my channel you can find the backstory of Ron and the Accuser, how it was that he was first introduced into the Marvel comic universe, the arrival of him and the supreme intelligence as well as the origins of the Kree Empire and on Benny's channel we'll be going into a discussion about Ron and the Accuser during and after the events of Annihilation, which was when he came into contact with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and especially Gamora, and the various storylines that he uh, got involved in. Now, for the most part, Ron and the Accuser's run in Marvel Comics is pretty limited. He only appears in about 324 issues. So if you guys are interested in learning about Ron and the Accuser uh, before, during, and after the events of Fantastic Four issue number 5, or 65, leading up to the current story and uh, Annihilation and uh, his events in Guardians of the Galaxy, then you can feel free to head over to my channel and take a look. But for right now, we're going to be focusing on Annihilation, and we're going to be talking about Ron and the Accuser during the Annihilation storyline, which was the storyline of Marvel Comics that led to the formation of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So during the video on my channel, we had talked about Ron and the Accuser's introduction into the Marvel Universe with Fantastic Four issue number 65, and that in subsequent uh, stories leading up to Inhumans volume 3 issue number 1, that Ron and the Accuser for the most part had been relegated to a background character, that he would show up periodically in the comics of Captain Marvel, the Silver Surfer, and other comics that took place on a galactic level and a universal scale, but for the most part, he would, really didn't get a whole lot of character development. He was simply just presented to us as a person that carried out the will of the supreme intelligence. But the Annihilation storyline gives us more discussion, it gives us more development when it comes to Ron and the Accuser. And in addition to the Annihilation storyline, we see of course the formation of the Guardians of the Galaxy. But with the Annihilation storyline, what we see going on here is that Ron and the Accuser has been accused of treason. And on my channel we had talked about the lineage, we had talked about the uh, progression of the Kree Empire in terms of the Kree race, and we had talked about how somewhere along the line the Kree race ran into stagnation, whereby the Kree race simply stopped evolving, and that the evolutionary process was jump-started by the Supreme Intelligence, both by virtue of initiating a war with the Shi'ar, as well as using something called the Forever Crystal, which allowed its wielder to manipulate time, but that as a result, a new form of Kree were created, and that those individuals that were able to trace their lineage back to the original Kree were considered part of an inner circle, they were considered part of an aristocracy, and were considered of a higher order than all the other Kree that had been result or that had been re been the result of uh, this new evolutionary process on behalf of the Supreme Intelligence. Ron and the Accuser is one such individual, which is the reason why Ron and the Accuser is the head of the Accuser Corps. He is able to trace his lineage back. But there are other individuals who are able to do the same thing, but they have their own machinations and their own goals. And one of these is an individual from the Fierro House, which is an organization of individuals who are attempting to overthrow 
overthrow the ruling government or the supreme intelligence within the Kree Empire and replace it with their own. And the reason why is because during this time in Marvel, the Annihilation storyline is a storyline whereby Annihilus, which is a villain from the Negative Zone who is attempting to eliminate all life, has begun spreading his forces throughout the Earth-616 universe and is in effect wiping out all life everywhere he finds it. And that the universe itself is in a state of war. And so Fiero is simply just trying to use this as a way to take over, trying to use this time while the Accuser Corps are spread thin and while the defenses of the Kree Empire are relatively uh, spread out to establish its own rule. Ron and the Accuser travels to a place called Godthab Omega, which is a planet which houses Gamora at this point in time. And Gamora has a group with her called the Graces, one of which is an individual named Tana Nile. Now, without going too far into, or I guess getting sidetracked too much, Tana Nile is part of a group called the Regellians, and the role of their race is to, in effect, conquer and terraform planets. But what we see going on here is that Ron and the Accuser attempts to is attempting to attain Tana Nile for uh, the means of finding out why she had accused him or had been part of the organization that had accused him of treason against the Kree Empire and tried to have him removed. But what we see is, of course, that Ron and the Accuser comes in direct conflict with Gamora. Now, because Gamora is, for the most part, the premier assassin in the Marvel Universe, uh, she's able to hold her own quite readily against Ron and the Accuser, despite the formidable abilities of Ron and the Accuser, both in terms of his ability to fight hand-to-hand, -hand, as well as his use of the universal weapon. And of course, on my channel, we had talked about the universal weapon, and that the universal weapon is, in effect, uh, a very, very powerful instrument that can only be used by the head of the Accuser Corps. And the universal weapon allows its wielder to manipulate all forms of energy, as well as manipulate matter. Now, the matter manipulation is not on a universal scale, that is to say, it doesn't allow its wielder to manipulate reality on the same scale as Franklin Richards, but what it does do is it allows the individual to manipulate matter on a much smaller scale, but to do it in such a degree where it is still a very formidable weapon. What we see is that during the conflict between Gamora and uh, Ron and the Accuser, that Annihilus's forces show up and begin to attack the planet. In response to this, Tan Annihil is killed by, by the Annihilation Wave, and Ron and the Accuser flees back to the home planet of the Kree in order to defend the planet against the, uh, the invasion of Annihilus. From here, we transition to the Annihilus conquest storyline, which is the aftermath of the Annihilation event after the defeat of Annihilus's forces, and we begin to see quite a few things take place. We see that for the most part, there are some empires that have been left in a state of almost total destruction, and as a result, they are very, very weak. One of these is the Kree Empire, and we see that another race comes into play that attempts to take over the Kree Empire, as well as a multitude of other races, which again is going to give us a little more explanation in terms of Ron and the Accuser, but not necessarily necessarily a whole lot. In fact, it'll have more to do with the Inhumans than it will with Ron and the Accuser himself. So the Annihilation Conquest storyline is a very interesting storyline, and the reason why is because where well, the Annihilation storyline was the story of Annihilus attempting to wipe out all life in the universe, the Annihilation Conquest storyline is for the most part a rebuilding storyline. But what we see going on with the Annihilation Conquest storyline is that multiple empires have been ravaged by the uh, Annihilation Wave, which includes the Kree. But in addition to Ron and the Accuser attempting to restore the Kree to their previous glory and the formation of the Guardians of the Galaxy at the hands of Peter Quill, we also see the return of Ultron. And the reason why we see the return of Ultron here is because after Ultron's most recent defeat at the hands of the Avengers on the planet Earth, that Ultron's consciousness still existed, although it was floating in space at the time, and it was discovered by the Phalanx. But what we saw going on here was that Ultron had merged itself with the Phalanx, and had emerged as a leader of the Phalanx. And so Ultron began this conquest of various planets in order to, in effect, create this uh, perfect sort of techno-organic, um, I guess maybe army of sorts, but that his plan involves not only uh, having his consciousness transferred to the mind of Adam Warlock, but also requires that he take over the mind of Tony Stark. But for the sake of this discussion, we're really going to be confining this video or this portion of the video to Ron and the Accuser and Guardians of the Galaxy. And what we see going on with Ron and the Accuser is that Ronan is attempting to restore the Kree Empire back to its former glory, because the Kree Empire, for the most part, has been completely 
completely ravaged by the Annihilation Wave. At this point, the Kree Empire is much smaller than it was before in terms of its overall Kree population, and that the Supreme Intelligence has also been destroyed. And so, Ron and the Accuser is the de facto leader of the Kree Empire. But what we also see going on here is that the Phalanx are attempting to invade the Kree and force the Kree into a state of subservience. And by the, by the time the Annihilation Conquest storyline begins, for the most part, Ultron is successful in doing this, that the Kree have, for the most part, been almost completely conquered by the Phalanx, and they have been made into either slaves or what are called Selects. Now, the Selects are very interesting when it comes to the Phalanx, and the reason why is because the Selects are individuals who are part of the Phalanx, although they are able to maintain their own mind, their own autonomy, but they exist to serve the will of the Phalanx. And with the Selects, of the individuals who have become Selects, one of the most notable is Gamora. And the reason why is because Gamora was tasked with the goal of tracking down Richard Rider and making Richard Rider one of the selects. Now, this was an event that we had covered on a, on a video in my channel about Richard Rider, so we're not going to go into too much detail about this. But what we see is that between both the Guardians of the Galaxy, Richard Rider, Quasar, and various other forces who have uh, banded together in an attempt to stop the Phalanx and, uh, and Ultron, that they are ultimately successful, that they are able to, uh, for the most part, defeat both Ultron and his Phalanx forces. Now, the events regarding Ultron and his defeat actually lead into what's called the Ultron War and eventually lead into the Age of Ultron storyline, but again, we're not going to sidetrack with uh, a discussion on those stories. But what we also see going on alongside the events of Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest is that on the planet Earth, we see the Civil War and the Secret Invasion. And on my channel, we had done a two-month-long series on the Civil War, which you're welcome to look at, but the Secret Invasion is a video that we haven't done yet. And the Secret Invasion was a storyline whereby the scrolls were invading the planet Earth, and they were replacing humans and superhumans with scroll duplicates. But of the superhumans that had been replaced, one of them was Black Bolt. But for the most part, the Inhumans hadn't necessarily uh, been completely replaced. And so of the Inhumans that were left, uh, these individuals had traveled to see Ron and the Accuser and enlisted the aid of Ron and the Accuser and the newly reinstated Kree Empire in an attempt to quell the threat of the, uh, of the scrolls on the planet Earth. Ron and the Accuser agrees to assist the uh, Inhumans, but only under the condition that uh, the Inhumans allow uh, Ron and the Accuser to marry Crystal. And the reason why this is done is because Crystal is, of course, an Inhuman, although she has not undergone terogenesis. And Crystal, because she is both Inhuman and, uh, I guess, a combination of Human and Kree, she possesses a set of genes that would assist in jumpstarting the evolutionary process of the, uh, of the Kree Empire. And the reason for this is because in the first instance on my channel, we had talked about how the Kree's evolutionary race had ran into a point of stagnation, and that the evolutionary process was jump-started the first time by the Supreme Intelligence by initiating a war between the Shi'ar and the Kree. But what we had seen is that with the almost total eradication of the Kree Empire, that for the most part, there isn't a lot of uh, other individuals, a lot of other races with whom the Kree can mate with to continue their evolutionary process. And so, by virtue of uh, Ron and the Accuser and Crystal mating with each other, they can reintroduce a fresh set of genes into the Kree gene pool and continue the evolutionary process of the genes, or of the uh, of the Kree. With the assistance of Ron and the Accuser and the Kree, we see, of course, that the Inhumans are successful in quelling the uh, the scroll threat, but what we see is that in response to the, the scrolls having attacked and, uh, for the most part, kidnapped both the Inhumans and the planet Earth, that uh, Black Bolt launches an attack against the escaping scroll ships, and then in invades the Kree Empire, which initiates a storyline called the War of Kings, whereby uh, Black Bolt wages war against the Shi'ar, which are led by Vulcan, the third Summer's brother, the brother of Havoc and Cyclops. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.